What's up everybody? It's BBK Dragoon here back with another mountain biking video. Oh boy, it's hot. It's in the 90s. It's almost midday. It's such a dry, nasty heat. You know, in Arizona, I'm not in there right now, but there were places that were like up to 115, 120 Fahrenheit. I don't know what 90s Fahrenheit translates into Celsius, but man, it's hot. Can't complain too much though. Just getting a ride during the work week is always a big plus. So today, I'm gonna be talking about buying a new mountain bike for an absolute beginner. Talking you through three main price points, the $1,000 hardtail, the $3,000 trail bike, and the $6,000 race bike. Now, there are more bikes in between, but those represent the three main price points of mountain bikes. And I'm gonna try and talk you into which mountain bike I would recommend for a beginner, somebody who wants to do trail riding like this, but is brand new to the sport. So they don't know what to buy. They don't know how much to spend. But if you guys go online and start looking up bike prices, you'll see sometimes mountain bikes are the price of motorcycles. It's because mountain biking is a more niche thing than motorcycles or BMX. So they get away with some pretty high prices. But you do not need to break the bank to get a good bike that'll let you enjoy trail riding. Now, if you live in flatland, you don't have trails near you, there's still trials, dirt jump, BMX, all sorts of stuff you can still do to ride. I won't be talking about that in this video. Last thing I'll say is I'm climbing, so I'm out of breath. Disclaimer, what I will say is what I'm trying to get into about a 10 minute video. I could talk with you guys for 30 minutes about this. So while this is a broad overview, what I'm saying will not apply to everybody in every single circumstance. So if you guys get that this is just a broad stroke to help out new people, awesome. So let's start with the most expensive, the $6,000 race bike. These are what you see if you go to websites. Bike companies love to show off these beautiful bikes. They're $6,000 and up. They're usually built with the nicest components on the market that are designed to be the lightest possible for racing. And they are sweet bikes. When I raced pro, I got to ride on three of those kind of bikes. And man, they are very, very fun. One second. But they also can be quite brittle. That means since the components are designed to be as lightweight as possible, they're not always the most durable. They're designed with a, a racer in mind. So that's a person who is going to be really thrashing their bike and taking it in a lot to replace components, hangers, drivetrain, chains, cassette, that kind of stuff. So while that $6,000 bike is really cool, it's totally not worth it unless you're a really serious racer. And if you are starting to race seriously enough that you're looking at one of those bikes, $6,000 and up, it's about time you probably look for sponsorship from a local bike shop or even some of the smaller bike companies. It's not like they're gonna hustle you a frame for free, but they might be able to get you the bike at cost plus 10%, which usually means about 40% off the package. So ignore those. If you're a brand new rider, ignore $6,000 bikes. Then we bring it down to the $3,000 trail bike. These are bikes between three and 4,000 bucks. This is considered the absolute sweet spot. Best bang for your buck, the best value mountain bike for enthusiasts, for people who know they like to ride, they ride consistently, and they're interested in dropping that kind of dough. That's pretty expensive. The thing is, those three and $4,000 trail bikes usually have the same frame design as the really Gucci $6,000 race bikes, but they come with heavier components. There is a benefit, however. Those heavier components tend to be a bit more durable, which is fantastic if you're somebody who does a lot of trail riding, doesn't want to be taking their bike in all the time. So the trail bikes are usually full suspension, four, five, six inches of travel. They're nice, they work well, they're rock solid, but it's not what I tell a brand new rider to go out and buy, because that's too much money. You don't even know if you like the sport yet. And that, my friends, brings us to the $1,000 entry-level hardtail. This is if my best friend, you know, was going out saying, hey, I wanna get into mountain biking. This is exactly what I drive him towards. 
These are going to be hardtails. They're going to have three or four inches of travel up front. They're going to be usually 29 inch wheels. You could do 2.6 or 27.5. It doesn't really matter. The 2.9er will add some extra rolling power. And with a hardtail, that means no suspension in the rear. Having the bigger wheels will help you roll over stuff a bit easier. So, why this bike? Well, these bikes are built with really durable components. Also, every single major bike manufacturer offers one of these bikes, a $1,000 hardtail. Why? It is an excellent entry-level bike. It's gonna be durable. It's gonna be able to withstand the abuse of trail riding. They're gonna give you a nice enough component set that it's durable. It can stand up to abuse. And when you're a new rider, trust me, you're gonna be abusing a lot of your components. Now, you might be asking yourself, what about full suspension? Isn't that better? Not necessarily, no. The thing is, getting into the full suspension, hold on. Getting into the full suspension market for under $2,000 is going to be hard. Why? Because on a full suspension bike, a lot of your money goes towards a more complicated frame design as well as that rear shock. There's linkages, bearings, a harder to weld frame, and a lot of your money and your budget get sucked out of the components into the frame and stuff on a full suspension bike. Another one here. Kicker. Ah, yeah. And I think one more. Hold on. No one saw that. We survived. Oh, big hole. And that's gonna eat somebody alive. So, that's why I'm saying don't get a full suspension for thousand bucks. You're gonna sacrifice huge on your components. You want durable components when you're a new rider. The other thing with hardtails too is, they're gonna teach you how to ride better. Full suspension bikes let you get away with some pretty bad line choice. If you hit flat edge rocks or pick really dumb lines on a hardtail, you're gonna get a pinch flat. It means you impact something so hard, pinches the rear tire against the rim and pops your tire. It teaches you how to pick better lines on a hardtail. So if you start hardtail, you're gonna learn a lot better mountain biking fundamentals. Then if you decide that you like the sport, you can move on to a full suspension bike. But what about the used market? Well, here's the thing. I don't recommend for new people to hop into the used market. There's a lot of wear and tear and abuse mountain bikes take, and unless you know what you're looking for, you can really get yourself into trouble. You could buy a cracked frame without even knowing it. You really are trusting the seller until you've got a good idea of what you're looking for in terms of abuse. So I'm not saying you can't get a great deal in the used market, you really can. But even I, I've ridden 12 years, raced. It's hard to see hairline cracks in frames. It's sometimes hard to identify that kind of abuse, even as somebody who's experienced. And I just hate, you know, it's not like when a car breaks, you call the tow truck. When your mountain bike breaks, it could like lend you land, land you in the hospital, dude. If you have big fra failure of your frame or the brakes, Last thing I'll say is avoid department store bikes. Often they're built by people who don't know what they're doing and the components are not built for this kind of abuse. They're just not. There's plenty of great videos online of people testing Walmart bikes out on trails and just showing you they don't stand up to the abuse and they're not safe. If you've got five or 600 bucks and you're like, dude, what should I buy? You can get a single speed two niner rigid for about six or 700 bucks. But what I'd honestly say is Hold up and wait and save a little bit more until you get to about a thousand. From there, just buy one of those entry level hardtails. That's, I think, your best bet. Is that going to fit everybody? The answer there is no. There's going to be some people here who have great used deals or who know a full suspension bike for 1500 bucks that they love. That's fine, and I'm happy to answer questions down in the description below. But that's what I'd recommend. If my best friend was like getting into biking, I'd tell them go that way because if you end up like not liking the sport dude you're not out a ton of money you can still flip the bike 
and they're durable. They're so durable. So, ah, water. Thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to see more videos of this kind, let me know. We can talk full suspension versus hardtail more. We'll talk about clips and flats, the difference between the two pedals, advantages, disadvantages. I appreciate it. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. I will see you next time. You know what? Overwatch's music reminds me of Back to the Future. Totally. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. See? They totally fit. My, we gotta go 88 miles per hour back to the future. Ooh, Sandy. Really?